In today's tutorial, we're going to replicate some work from my campo. So hi guys, welcome back to new year, new Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny, you guys know that. And before I even get into today's tutorial, I do want to give you guys a small update. We are doing a few changes here on the channel. As you guys most probably noticed, we are now Manny Photo slash Retard Pro. This is because I'm building a new company, new website and everything called retardpro.com. So me and a few colleagues, we together tried to make better content for this channel in 2014 and more pro courses or pro tutorials for you on retardpro.com. But more of that in a little while. We are still building the site, so hang in there. And don't be afraid, I'm not gonna go away from this channel or with somebody else. I'll still be here and produce video tutorials, Photoshop tutorials for you guys. Anyway, so today we're gonna do an epic tutorial about Mike Kampau's work. Basically what he did is he shot a campaign for Samsung where a guy was holding or a person was holding the Samsung phone. You've got to see something on the phone and in the background you see a landscape shot or whatever sports uh, that person is doing at the moment. So what we want to do today is also replicate something in that way where we are shooting a person while she is cooking. Actually, it's a lady holding her iPhone and reading from Jamie Oliver's app. So let's get started with that. First of all, I've opened Bridge and in Bridge, you guys can see already our background shot that we shot here, just a normal stove. And that is kind of our background shot. And then as well, we have a shot here from a lady holding her iPhone. So that is the second shot. And we're going to merge that together as well. Also, we took some screenshots here, which I'm going to show you down here. So we took a few extra shots here from Jamie Oliver's app. Just some normal screenshots. Very easy to do that as well. If you hold the home button and the lock button together to impress them to once uh, together, you can have a nice screenshot like this. Okay, so that's going to be the screenshot basically that's going to go on the phone. Here you guys also see a finished example already. So basically we're going to merge this on top of the phone and as well cut out the hand, put that on here. Also do a few adjustments and put the stove and everything into the background. Kind of like a girl or lady cooking and while she's cooking she's reading on her Jamie Oliver's app and reading some recipes. So this is also the another idea again, which I also showed you most probably earlier here, to see how they actually did it. Background shot, normal shot just with the hand and the phone, then also merging all together, and as well adding another shot in here. Which you can also see over the right hand side here are a few examples. Okay, so let's get started with it. Right away I'm going to go into bridge, select this first here, and also double tap, that will take us right into camera raw. And I already adjusted this previously, but I still do want to give you guys a few hints that I did here. First of all, my temperature, 4500 Kelvin, just to have an even ex uh, color temperature overall, so it's not too yellow, too blue. This kind of looked good for it. Then as well, exposure, kept everything to that. Contrast, plus three, yeah, just pushed it a little bit up. Highlights, I also didn't play too much with that, just took them down a bit to just flatten this a little bit so the attention obviously needs to go onto the hand which will go into the center. So taking that down just a little bit. Then as well, the shadows over here, um, they were quite dark so I pushed them up a little bit so just to get a bit more detail into the shadows here. We had quite a harsh light on the right hand side as you guys can also see with the shadow falling here. So with it was actually just with no, uh, no diffusion material on there, so it's quite hard. So it would have even been better with a big octobank or something, umbrella with diffuser to make it really nice and soft. Okay, so that's why I also pushed up the shadows a little bit. My whites left that, so blacks down a little bit, so just to push and to just darken it a bit more again. And then obviously down here as well, the saturation also took that down to minus six. So just desaturate that a little bit. I do want to apply more tension later onto the hand. Okay, so minus seven, minus eight. Then as well, I'm gonna go to the workflow options down here, have a look. Um, I don't wanna input it as a smart object, so tick this box off, say okay, and I'm gonna hit open image, and it'll take that right into Photoshop. So that's our now basic plate, our first step of the whole process. Okay, so it's in Photoshop ready. F next step that I'm going to do is also with the background layer. I'm just going to double tap on here just to unlock that again. So just say OK and we can also rename this now just to base. So it's my base plate. Okay, my first image. Also in the background you guys can still see we've got bridge open here. So I'm going to switch back to bridge and as well going to select now the hand. 
double tap on that it will also open in camera raw and as you guys can already see again I've already adjusted a few things here very important now first step that you need to consider when you do something like this keep your temperatures at the same number because it's very important that you have the same color temperature okay so I kept mine at 4500 again then as well exposure contrast didn't play too much with that shadows up a little bit again because we also tried to shoot this hand now with the same lighting uh, position so it's also again here coming from the right but this time with a diffuser material on there so it's a bit softer the shadow over here but still we didn't add another light from this side we didn't want to eliminate the shadow because obviously our first shot also had shadows on the left side so trying to just build that a little bit better okay so again also for that took my shadows up just a little bit and the blacks down a little bit just darkening them a bit and also saturation to minus 11 just a little bit because it was quite red all the skin tones here so just taking that to minus 11 somewhere around there that kind of looks better I'm not gonna work too much today on the skin retouching and stuff you could either do that as well but I want to have a look later okay so let's open this as well into Photoshop okay so there we have our shot in Photoshop as well next step also double tap on here I want to also rename or I don't even rename this layered one is okay or layer zero and hit okay so it's just unlocked for the moment then as well before we even start with the whole Photoshop process let's switch back to bridge here and also start building uh, this whole screen as you guys can also see this is not completely the original screen I've added this Jamie Oliver's recipe in here so someone can obviously understand that this is an app and they reading it so it's not just like these just a picture for me it looked a bit nicer if you would be actually doing something while you're cooking or while they are holding this phone okay so I'm gonna take this screenshot here and as well this screenshot and build something together out of them so those are PNG files. I can either also hit now command here, press right click and say open with and then we're going to go to Photoshop CS6. Okay, so open that in Photoshop as well. Both of them are opening. We can switch back to bridge. I'm going to close bridge for now. I don't need it anymore. Switch back to Photoshop. Let's also make this a little bit bigger here. Double tap again onto the background layer. We're unlocking that so we can just move freely with our layer. And as well this layer, we're going to take this straight over here so I'm just grabbing the layer hold shift moving it over to this window over here we drop it and that also clips again to the size to the whole canvas okay I'm gonna go back to this window here we can actually cancel this okay let's go back to our screenshot now next step F again make it a nice full screen and what I actually want to do now is just put this Jamie Oliver's recipe name right at the top on top of this whole screen so it's somewhere over here on the top and so that it just looks a little bit nicer okay so switching back to this first layer and I'm going to press M for the marking tool and just roughly make a selection here backspace delete that part go up with a marking tool again I'm going to move the selection around and as well going to cut it off somewhere here backspace again command D get out of the selection okay so we've got this layer one now and with the V tool just press V on your keyboard we're getting into the move tool and we can move this straight up all the way And as you guys can also see now we've got this little line here from this bar I do want to keep this line in as well so I'm going to move that layer one just underneath it or just on top of it so we still have this little line here okay another step like this so you guys can still see it here if I zoom in a little bit it just looks a bit more good or better and yeah looks a little better anyways okay so got that Jamie Oliver's recipe in there so that's basically already my finished screenshot I'm just gonna press command alt shift and E all together make a master shortcut so we merge all the visible layers together to one and that is now for the iPhone so I'm just gonna write iPhone so that's gonna be our iPhone cover shot okay so let's also or the screenshot let's also press F again get out of the full screen mode go back to the hand here and as well we can first of all work here on just our base plate so I'm gonna press F again move this a little bit into the center and first step that I actually even before I start what I want to do is build two help layers one help layer will be for the hand so I'm gonna write your hand and this will just be I don't know black or something so it's just gonna have black margins I can also take V tool again for the move tool. I'm going to go here all the way to the ruler and just take the ruler all the way out somewhere over here. So I want to make my rulers 
or space this a little bit nicer. So somewhere over here, that's going to be my main frame, like a little square frame over here, maybe a little bit more. Okay, I don't want to add too much here because I want to clone the tile maybe also in here. It looks quite empty, which I can see right now. So far, it looks all right. Then with the hand as well, we'll be first of all on the black still. I'm going to take the marking tool over here and just make a nice big selection here. Hold shift so we get into the add mode and we can add another selection over here. Okay, so these are my two selections. I'm going to press right click into the selection, say fill down here. And we can fill this now with black foreground color. So with the content area, black contents. Okay, so that is filled up. I'm going to press Command D. And now I get a bit of a better perspective of what I'm seeing already and how my whole final shot will look like. So if I'm not happy, I can still take this base plate at the bottom and move this around a little bit. But so far, I'm pretty happy with this. One thing though, or actually two things, it's a little bit going down, so the lines over here, so a bit skew. I do want to push this a little bit up with the warp tool, straighten this. As well down here, the counter as well, also going kind of skew. I also want to push this and straighten this a little bit. And then as well, just add this little tile or thing, whatever you guys call this. Um, so I also want to add this as well. Okay, then let's go back to the hand layer for the help layer. I'm just going to go and switch to a new foreground color, say some red over here. Press B for the brush. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger here. Press Control Alt together and move left and right to make it bigger, up and down to feather your brush. Okay, somewhere over there. And now what I'm going to do is just roughly paint the hand, so the phone over here, maybe a few fingers and hand. So that's kind of where I'm imagining the hand to be. Okay, I can still move this hand tool around, so maybe a little bit over the pot here as well, something like that. So it will kind of go through the whole image and take loads of this empty spaces away, which is kind of good. Okay, kill that hand layer again, also the blacks. First of all, what I'm going to do is go back to my base plate layer here, and we're going to straighten things up a little bit. So I'm going to go to Edit here, Transform and Warp, so I can warp just this image a little bit. I'm going to hold Shift again now, and just take this anchor point here on the left side, and just push that up a little bit, just in order to straighten this line here a little bit. You can also, if you want to take another ruler from the top and move, move it down, another guideline here to show you whenever everything is straightened. But so far, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so then as well, also down here, we can actually show you guys this. So I'm going to move a guideline down here. And as you guys can see how strong this is like kind of going up all the way. So I want to straighten this a bit. Back to edit, transform, once again, warp, hold shift again. Don't forget to just take the anchor point over here, and then I'm just stretching this out a little bit, moving this a little bit down. Okay, a little bit further, and up again. So that's kind of good enough already for me. Okay, so accepting that again from the top. Okay, so pretty happy with that. I can now also take this guideline, just take, oops, press Command Z, go step back, just go over the guideline here and then this normal icon will appear and you can just drag the line out. Okay, so we've got that. Now as well I do want to add this tile. Let's also maybe try to make another. We can also do a selection around the tile which I'm actually going to do now quickly just with marking tool again. I'm going to select all of this area over here. Then as well press Command C and Command V to duplicate paste this little selection area here. So we've got that. I'm going to rename that just to 2 also switch on my black margins here again, the frame, and also move that in a little bit closer. And now I can already see where that kind of will align in. So already you can see also the tiles that kind of match. We still need to just adjust this a little bit. So I'm going to move a little bit over here. Okay, just with the cursors left and right, moving that. As well on this, I'm going to add a layer of a mask now. So just hit the mask icon here, take the brush again with B, as well, control all together to just make the brush a little bigger, first of all, left and right. And then up and down, I do want to feather it around, say, 50, almost 50%. No, maybe even more, 40%. Okay, also making this a little bit smaller again. And now with black foreground color, because we're on a white mask here, I'm going to paint around, say, 50% opacity here from the top. Also my flow up to 100 again. Okay, 50 and flow 100. Okay, let's also press Z to zoom a little bit in and B for the brush again, and I'm just stroking over this. 
a few times just to brush the edges here out so that these tiles just merge in a little bit better okay as well here from the top bottom Okay, I think there is not even a line here at the back so we have to brush that out a bit better yeah like that okay so the lines go all the way through here from the tiles there's not another tile line there anyways okay this looks pretty good with the shadow as well same color everything is good so I don't need to do another adjustment layer for that and then already my frame looks a bit more filled up and everything kind of looks proper and it's not falling to one side everything looks good enough for me then as well obviously we're going to still blur the shot that we're going to do once we are done with everything and once we are cropped or maybe cropping at the end hand tool I can actually remove that again the hand layer over here next step is again I'm going to press command alt shift E again master shortcut to merge all layers together together so for that first of all I also have to turn off the black margins or these bars here go back to your last layer because you can't do a master shortcut here <laughs> on a ticked off or when the visibility is off you can't do this master shortcut on there so go switch back okay I'm gonna press command alt shift E again so we have a master shortcut and this is now again our main layer I'm just gonna call this main okay so turn all of that off you guys can also see that is now our main layer back on with black frames happy okay so switch with F again back to the hand I'm gonna go all the way to the hand here F again full screen mode I'm going to zoom in a bit closer and now most of you guys already seen me working with the pen tool and also know the pen tool. What I'm going to do now is basically with the pen tool cut out the whole arm. I'm not going to pay too much attention on all these little fine hairs. So they won't even, you won't even see that. So I'm going to blur this later a little bit and yeah just merge that out a little bit. So I'm going to go all the way around with the pen tool, cut the hand out and then we're going to do a mask on that okay so I'm going to start down here and I'll also fast forward the video a little bit so you don't need to sit here and watch me do the whole pen strokes for another half an hour one little tip that I can give you guys here when you do it with a pen tool don't literally cut it out like this where you're adding a little bit of white go a little bit closer into the skin so you're actually stealing away a few pixels from the body here or from the arm but that will help you to not have a little white border around your arm once you merge it in again. I'll show you guys exactly later what I mean with this. Okay, so let's also continue now just with cutting out the hand. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out again a little bit and as you guys can see I did this quite quickly now. You should please spend a bit more time doing stuff like this. It's very important that you do cut out properly and not as quick as I'm doing it now. Okay, so this also now completing the path as you guys can see over here. Double tap just on the last step and we have our complete path around the hand now. Next step is still in the pen tool. What I'm going to do is also press just P here, pen tool, right click and say make a selection. Then as well zero feathering, that's okay. Okay, and we have a nice selection around our arm now. Next step, I'm going to go and hit here the mask icon. So we have just a hidden mask and we just have the hand out and cut out really nicely. Okay, press F again, get out of the full screen mode move the screen away here your window and now the next step comes in where we're going to merge everything together so moving just this layer over here hold shift again if you want to that will clip in there right and now next step is again with the V tool I'm just gonna move this over and as you guys can already see here you do see this little white border a little bit so try to cut it out as nice as you can so you don't get this white border or shoot it against gray that also helps you can use some certain elements here again to do it with a quick selection then also with refine edge and you can cut out hands and arms very very easy instead on a white okay so let's move this a little bit over I'm pretty happy already with the size so I'm going to keep this a little bit like to this big size so everything is nice and big and you do see the hand and it's the main element in the shot so covering up a lot of this empty space in the background 
Okay, move it somewhere over here. That's pretty cool. Okay, so then as well, I don't need this window here anymore. I can just close this again. Don't save that. And as well, also, I'm going to move this window away. Take your iPhone shot, move that into here, and then we already have that. Close the last window, and now we just have one final window. I'm going to press F again. Zoom a little bit closer. Okay, and accept what we're going to do here with the iPhone. Press Command T to just scale this and rotate this a little bit. So I'm going to rotate this up a little bit and also make it a little bit bigger. For that, I'm holding Shift and taking the anchor point here again on the side. So it's just going all the way and not distorting. Okay, a little bit bigger. And also down here a little bit more. So I can see I need to rotate this a little bit again. It's quite tricky. Okay, and a little bit more and hold shift again. We're going to make it a little bit bigger than the actual screen is. Okay, move it over. Rotate that again a little bit. And a little bit bigger. Okay, accept it. And now with my cursor, I'm going to press V on the keyboard and just move this a little bit around. Up and down. And I think I need to rotate this again a little back down here. It's a little bit close there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Next step that I still want to do with this, also with the cursor, left, right. So look, it's still not perfect yet, but that should do it for the quick tutorial. I'm going to go and also press a mask tool on here. Okay, let's zoom a little bit. And I do want to cut out the edge just a little bit here. Press B for the brush, control all together. Go left and right to make it a little bit smaller. And up and down, I want to make it completely hard. And as well, I'm working with the Intenuous 5 tablet from Wacom, so I'm able to wire my wheel here, change my brush size. If you don't have that, please go up here to the top on the left-hand side, and you can also select your size and hardness over here from your brush. Okay, so I'm literally now with 100% opacity, just brushing away a little bit these corners here, so it's a little bit rounder as well. Over here the same. Okay, a little bit too much. I'm going to press Command Z, just go a little step back. Okay, it's still too much. Something like that. Uh, sometimes it takes a few times. Okay, so also down here, we're going to do the same as well. Okay, and on this side as well. So it's just a little bit round. It looks a bit nicer. Okay, so let's zoom out again. So that is already for just the iPhone, just for the screen. Let's move that over. Let's also have a look quickly here at our mask. As you guys can see now, if you also shoot this on a gray, it will, on a gray background, the hand, you can actually get all of these little hairs out as well. Because if you're working with refined edge, first of all, doing a selection around the arm and then refining this edge, all these little hairs will come out really, really nicely. I can also do this on a white layer. This tutorial would just get way too long, so I'm not going to do this today. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of these little white uh, borders here, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to go back here to my other layer. Also press B for the brush again and just soften my brush a little bit, say to 80%. Okay, make it a little bit smaller. Black foreground color. And we're just erasing this a little bit. So again, as I mentioned earlier, you can steal a little bit from this hand, a little bit from the pixels here. And that will just merge a little bit better. So I'm not going to go all the way around now. It will take way too long for this tutorial. But showing you guys just how I, how I would do this. Okay, go all the way around here as well. I would retouch this out a little bit. Then as well down here a little bit and just fade this a little bit. Also trying to make the nail a little bit rounder. The same over here. Also trying to get that out. The phone looks good so far. And this as well. Okay, yeah. So basically I would just clean up that mask a little bit. And that's already now my whole base plate. Okay, I'm going to also press now for the hand or for the iPhone first a group here. Command G. Right, iPhone, then as well for the hand, Command G, hand. It's just for me to structure my file a little bit better so I know what's happening and what I'm doing here so I have a nice and clean PSD file once we end it. I'm going to call this main. Then as well, just going to press Command G here and say this is the start. Okay, I can turn this off. I need my main layer now. And first of all, what I want to do is go to adjustments here at the top, go to curves and also just tweak that exposure a little bit, flatten it a little bit so more tension actually goes to the hand. Okay, a little bit down here, so I'm going to take the white highlights a little bit up. Sorry, a little bit down here just to flatten that a little bit. Also the darks just a bit more. OK, 
okay somewhere over there the same with the hand as well also going to adjust the exposure here just a little bit dimmer okay also going to take a curves and one step that I actually already forgot is while you're doing this I'm going to go between the layers hold alt and clip this right down neath to the main layer so this basically this adjustment layers from the curves is only affecting the main layer underneath it the same now with the hand because obviously this layer if I want to push it up it will affect the complete image all or the whole image if I want to hold alt and go between the layers to clip this adjustment layer to my hand layer it will only affect the hand as you guys can see now okay so what I'm going to do is also just push this down a little bit Okay, just exposure wise, it's quite bright though. Okay, now you can even take it further where you just, I'm going to also do it actually right now, taking a hue and saturation layer, also again clipping that underneath to that, taking just the saturation from the reds out a little bit more from the hand here, so just desaturating the reds a little bit. And you can actually take it a little bit further where you're going to soften the skin here a little bit and just take out all these little aders and flatten it a little bit. Do so a bit of basic retouching here just on the hand just to get a, out all these lines out here. Or just maybe with dodge and burn even just go into the dark areas here and just brighten that up a little bit so the hand doesn't look too much like that. It looks a little bit nicer and cleaner. Okay, zoom out again a little bit. Last step that I still want to show you guys now is obviously going back to the main base plate. Let's just go all the way down here and do the main effect, which will actually give your whole image that wow effect. So we're going to go back to filter and blur this now. So go to Gaussian blur and blur this background shot. So as you guys can see already, I already set it. Uh, it normally was at, I don't think, 1.6 or something. So that's not blurred that much yet so I do want to push it up a little bit further say to almost 7 now it's getting even more blurrier you kind of have to try where it looks the best when it's too blurry it doesn't look good when it's not too blurry it also doesn't look good so for me 9 to 10 was kind kind of good enough something like that maybe pushing it down a bit more 9.1 that's good enough for me okay so as well now just pay attention that all of these edges look very hard one little step that I also always do is go back here to my layer, but to the mo uh, actually to the layer, not to the mask. Go all the way back in. And once I'm done with this, I go to the blurring tool here over here, the smudge or blurring tool, the little blur tool. And then around, uh, say, 80% and a very, very small brush size, as you guys can see over here now. I'm just going over these edges once I have cleaned up my mask. So I normally should actually go and clean up the mask now. I will just brush a little bit on here. I'm still on the brush, I'm not on the smudge tool. Sorry, on the blur tool here. So again, 80% and I'm just literally just breaking these edges a little bit as you guys can see. You can also push it up to 100%. Okay, and now I can just brush and break this edge just a little bit. So that will just make this image look a little bit more real in the end as well. So a little trick here as well, I always brush these little edges. Don't brush over the whole finger, then you will blur everything. You just want to blur this little edge so it does look a little bit more real at the end. Okay, so that's also another step that I do. And then overall we have, say if I have finished that, if I have cleaned up the skin, retouched, dodged and burned a little bit in here. Let me also show you guys that quickly. So I'm going to create a new layer just with a normal help layer. So I would basically just go in here and burn, sorry, and dodge all these little lines over here. So you're still keeping the texture and everything of the hand, but just dodging that a little bit makes the hand already look a little bit nicer and better. Again, with just some curves layer or some gray layers that you want to do, that will also help to make this image look a little bit better. Okay, last step that I'll still do is go back to the iPhone, also turn off the margins here again. I'm going to press again, Command, Alt, Shift, E, all together have my last layer here, so everything is merged to one final layer. I can also turn off all the groups, or we'll make them just smaller. Now we can also press C for the Crop tool, move our image all the way into our borders, our guidelines here, accept that, and that is already then adjusted. We have our main frame again, and last step that I'll still do is go back to Adjustments over here, back to selective color and do an overall color adjustment on this. But not in my red tones, I would go back to neutrals and in neutrals push this just a little bit. If you want to have a little bit more red, 
You can obviously play with your sign. Magentas, let's also push them up a little bit. Okay, yellows, we don't want the kitchen to be too yellow, but do have a little bit of that warm yellowy touch in it. So maybe plus four. And overall brightness and darkness, we can still tweak that a little bit. And then obviously you can still continue with some curved layers and also play in your different RGB channels here and get a nicer color tone for this, which I'm not going to do now. I showed you guys these often in the tutorials, but just showing you guys today quickly how you can do a normal cutout like my Campo also did. Okay, yeah, so that's basically all for the tutorial. We can still do Command Alt Shift E, Master Shortcut again. This black layer over here, we don't need this. So Command Shift Alt E. Once you have done all your adjustments for the color, you have your final shot and you can save it. All right, yeah, so that's basically all for today's Photoshop tutorial, guys. Do let us know in the comments down below what you think about the cooking series or do you think a motocross series would have even been better? All right, yeah, so that's basically all. Subscribe, hit the thumbs up, support us, and don't forget to check out retardpro.com. Little trailer video after this, and yeah, hopefully we're up soon to support you guys with more free content and epic content, pro tutorials, free tutorials, all that stuff. Anyways, thanks again for watching. See you guys next week for a new Photoshop tutorial. Bye-bye.